Our next unit here is going to be on math number three. In this unit, we are going to cover two things, uh, SI unit conversions uh, and percent error. So first on to SI unit conversions. So we want to convert from the base unit of a pre from a base unit to a prefix unit and vice versa. So to do that, we know from what we talked about before that the prefixes indicate certain amounts you either decrease or increase the unit size. And we could substitute that number in to figure out what numbers we get there. Um, now to do this, I'm going to make a suggestion that you use a particular way of writing these out for conversions and uh, using a type of table. And the way you start off with these is you're going to start off by simply writing out the number you start with. So in this case, 14.5 centimeters. So we say 14.5 cm like this. And this is how you're going to start. What you're then going to do is you're going to make a table. Do that by drawing out a line here, putting a cross line across this. The way this table works is that everything that's on top of the table, uh, anything that's in a box, say this, this side over here or this side right here, you'd multiply those two because they're both on top. Anything that's on bottom here or here, you divide by those numbers. Now, since what we want to do is we want to convert units, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out the units we are converting to and from. So in this case, we want to have a unit that's not centimeters. That means we have to get rid of centimeters somehow. Mathematically, to get rid of it, we have to divide by that unit. And so what we're going to do is we are going to write down the unit centimeters on the bottom because the bottom we said was a divided by thing. And so whenever we divide by this, that's going to cancel centimeters. So centimeters is going to cancel here. Now on top, we want to write the unit that we go to. And so we want to go to meters. And so we're going to put meters up here. And so what this is going to do is this will cancel centimeters, top and bottom. It'll leave us only with meters left over. Now what do we put? We can't just put the units up here because if you think about it is that every one the reason why we have these uh these vertical lines the vertical lines indicate you're basically multiplying and dividing but you have to you can only sort of add things that multiply times 1 right mathematically um that's the way you sort of set things up so what that means is that the number of meters and the number of centimeters have to be the same well we can figure this out because we said before is we said that centi means something right and so centi, if you look at your table, you'll see centi means 0 0.01. It means 10 to the negative second. And so 0 0.01 is in the place of centi. So what we do is we'd say 1 centimeter is the same as 0 0.01 meters. Those two things are equal. So we put them in like this. Once we've got this, we can go ahead and do our math. Because centimeters is going to cancel out like that, which leaves us only with meters. And so what we do is we multiply across the top. 14.5 times 0 0.01 divided by 1. And so whenever we do that right there, we get an answer that's going to be 0 0.145 meters, like that. And so that's going to be what we get for our answer. Now, you are probably thinking at this point, there was a whole lot faster way to do this. I know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter, so I just take 14.5 and divide it by 100. And you'd be exactly right. That way works quite well for ones that are very, very simple like this. But I'm going to suggest that you try out this method um, because we are going to get some problems that are much more complex. We'll use this method not just on conversions of uh, units. We'll use it later on in the year on all sorts of things. And we'll get to ones of these that have many, many, many steps. And if you do it this way, it's going to save you a whole lot of trouble because it'll tell you when to multiply and when to divide. We basically let the units guide us and the units will automatically tell us when we multiply and when we divide, which saves that question of, OK, I'm converting from inches to miles, and I know I've got this in here and this in here. And do I divide by 12 or multiply by 12? If you do this method, you don't have to worry about that. So let's set up this next one. Convert 7.3 liters to microliters. So we first start off with the number we're given, 7.3 liters. And so we set up our table. We want to get rid of liters. We want to cancel it, so that means liters is going to be on the bottom. We want to go to microliters. And so we use our little mu for micro. So we have microliters right here. And so wh what does micro mean? Micro means a millionth. That's 10 to the negative 6. So up here, we'll have one microliter, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 6 liters. And so we have 10 to the negative 6 on the bottom. And so whenever we do that, we'll multiply this out. 
So 7.3 times 1 divided by 10 to the negative 6. You actually do the math on this, and what you end up finding is we end up getting 7.3 times 10 to the positive 6 microliters in one liter. And that's how you set that up. Okay? So let's do a couple more of these to make sure we know what we're doing here. Um, next one on. In this case right here, we're going to make one slight change from what we did before. Last time we only changed between things that didn't have a prefix to what did have a prefix or vice versa. Um, here, we're going to go from a prefix unit to another prefix unit. So in this case, 54.91 kilometers to decameters. And so this one might be a little harder to do sort of quickly in your head. This one be, you'll see it's a little more useful to set up the table. So we'll start off with setting this up 54.91, 54.91 kilometers. Set up our table like this. And the first thing we do, we want to get rid of what unit? Kilometers. So we put kilometers on the bottom. Okay? What do we want to go to? Well, we want to go to decameters. But if you look at your table, you don't have a conversion between kilometers and decameters, but you do have a conversion between kilometers and meters. Ah, so what can we say here? Well, we'd say that one kilometer is how many meters? Kilo means a thousand, or ten to the third. So one kilometer is a thousand meters. This is going to cancel out kilometers, leave us with meters. So at this point, we now our kilometers are gone. We have meters that are left. But we don't want to end up in meters, we want to end up in decameters. So to do that, we're going to set up another part of the table. We want to cancel meters, we want to go to decameters. One decameter, deca means what? means 10. So we have 10 meters on the bottom, one decameter on the top. Meters are going to cancel out. That leaves us with what unit left over? Only with decameters. And so since we only have decameters left, we can go ahead and do our math. So the math says, if you remember, we multiply across the top. So we say 54.91 times 1,000, because that's on top, and then times 1, because that's on top, divided by the things are on the bottom, divided by 1, and then divided by 10. So doing that, we end up with a final answer of 54.91 decameters, almost off the screen. So this is what we end up for our final answer here. Okay? So our next one here. Convert 0 0.03 milligrams to centigrams. So we'll start off by putting our first amount here, 0 0.03 milligrams. So we say 0 0.03 milligrams like this. Set up our table. We want to convert away from milligrams first. So we put milligrams on bottom to cancel it. We want to then go to the base unit which is going to be grams here. And so once we've got that, we say one milligram because in general what you'll find on these is the ones that have the prefix. They'll always, when you're going between two SI units, the one with the prefix always has one in front of it. And the one that's the base unit always has the value of the prefix in front of it. So in this case, once again, unit is milli. Milli is one thousandth or ten to the negative third. You can use either one. It really doesn't make a difference. So we'll say 10 to the negative third in this case, because that's what's equal to milli. And so we can do that. Now we want to go and get rid of grams. And so we want to get rid of grams. We want to go to centigrams. So we have one centigram, because the one goes with the prefix. The prefix number goes with the base unit. So centi is 10 to the negative second, or 1 hundredth. And so looking at this, we can see that milligrams is canceled. Grams is canceled. We've got that. The only unit we have left is centigrams, which is what we want. So once again, break out the calculators. And we multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. So 0 0.03 times 10 to the negative third, and um, then times 1, divided by 1, and then divided by 10 to the negative second. And so if you do that, you end up getting, for our final answer here, 0 0.003 centigrams. Keep in mind as you do these is that you do want to keep significant figures 
you do want to account for them. Because of the fact that all the things that we've multiplied or divided by have been conversion factors, we said last time that conversion factors have infinite significant figures, so we don't have to worry about them. Um, and so if that's the reason why for our original numbers versus final numbers, if you look at them, they all have the same number of significant figures. It sort of came out automatically because of the way we sort of set this up. But it's something you do want to keep in mind as you work through these problems. Let's try a couple more conversions. 73 meters to millimeters. So starting this off, we would put in the amount we start with, 73 meters, set up our table like this. We want to get rid of meters. We want to go to millimeters. Well, normally we go to the base unit first, but we've already got the base unit. We have a conversion between meters and millimeters. And so what would we say? We'd say that we know that the one goes with the one of the prefix, so one millimeter is how many meters? Milli is going to be 10 to the negative third. That really didn't show up very well. I'm going to erase that and try that again. Um, draw that again. 10 to the negative third. So 10 to the negative third is going to be meters here. And at that point, the uh, meters just cancels just quite out nicely like that. We just have 73. And put this in the calculator, 73 multiply across the top, so times 1 is just 73, and then divided by 10 to the negative third, so just like that, and we end up getting 73,000 for this, and so 73,000 millimeters, because that's the only unit left, and so that would be what our answer would be here. Our next one, 18.1 nanograms to kilograms. So we start off here, we'll say 8 18.1 nanograms, set up our table. We want to put nanograms on the bottom because the fact that that's what we want to cancel. We put one nanogram because the one goes with the prefix unit. We want to go to grams on top. Well, we look up on our table. What does nano mean? Nano means 10 to the negative ninth. So we have 10 to the negative ninth, that is a negative sign, 10 to the negative ninth grams right there. And so that gets us from nanograms to grams, but we want to go to kilograms. So we set up another part of our table here. We want to cancel grams. We want to go to kilograms. One kilogram, kilo means a thousand or ten to the third. So we put in a thousand here. Now we can just multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. 18.1. So 18.1 you put in your calculator times ten to the ninth power. So times ten to the sorry, times ten to the negative ninth power my apologies, times 1, then divide that by 1, then divide that by 1,000. And whenever you do that, you know, we're getting a nice scientific notation number, 1.81 times 10 to the negative 11th power. And what unit should this have? Well, let's look at what canceled. Nanograms canceled, grams canceled. So what's left? Only one unit left, that's kilograms, which is what we wanted. So that's what we have right there. Our next one, 360 megaliters to centiliters. Okay, so we start off here with 360 megaliters, because capital M is mega. Set this guy up. What do we want to cancel first? What unit? The one we start with, which is megaliters. So we go from megaliters, we always want to go to the base unit first, liters here. Megaliters gets a one because it has the prefix. Mega means what? Mega means a million, 10 to the 6th. And so we'll put 10 to the 6th power up here for liters there. That gets rid of megaliters. Now we want to get rid of liters, and we want to go to centiliters. One centiliter, how many liters is that? Centi is 1 hundredth, so 0 0.01, or 10 to the negative second. Either one works. So let's multiply. Well, first thing, let's look at what happens to units. Megaliters cancels. Liters cancels just like that. So we're left only with centiliters, which is what we want. So we'd say, multiply this out, multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. We say 360 times 10 to the sixth power times 1 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.01. And so doing that, we end up with an answer of uh, 3.6 times 10 to the tenth centiliters. And so that's what we get for our answer. All right. One last example problem here. We're going to go from 18 milligrams to decigrams. 
So we start off the same way we did before. 18.0 milligrams. Multiply this out. And so we want to get rid of what first? We want to get rid of milligrams. So we put milligrams on the bottom. We want to go to what? The base unit. So we put the grams on top. So in milligrams is the prefix, so it gets the one. Milli is a thousandth, or 10 to the negative third. So we have that right there. Keep going on our table here. We want to get rid of grams. We want to go to decigrams. Deci has the prefix, so it gets the one. Deci means one-tenth. So 0.1 grams right there. What do our units cancel? Milligrams cancels milligrams. Grams cancels grams. That's gone. We're left just with decigrams, which is what we want. And so we then, once again, multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. So we'd say 18.0 times 10 to the negative third times 1 uh, divided by 0.1. And so doing that, we end up getting 0.18 is what my calculator gives me. Now, uh, we do want to watch out for something here, because I just put 0.18. That has how many significant figures? Only two. Our original number had three, 18.0. So this actually needs to have three, so 18.0 right out there. And the unit's going to be decigrams. And that's our final answer there. So there we have for that. So our last thing here we're going to talk about is going to be about percent error. Now error is basically how far off you are from reality whenever you measure something. Um, oftentimes is that you may measure something and you know that say that the Fahrenheit, the freezing point of water, should be at 32. Now let's say that you do a measure, you stick a thermometer in water and you watch it cool down until it starts freezing, it shows ice crystals, and it says the temperature was 35 when that happened. You were off by 3 degrees. There's some error. Um, there are two types of error. There is absolute error and there is relative error. Absolute error would be, in that case, the fact that you were off by 3 degrees. It tells you exactly how much you're off based on sort of the, the amount that's, um, that, that you're off by. Uh, just measure the difference. The problem with absolute error is it really doesn't tell you how good your result is. Like, let's suppose that I measure something, and when I measure it, I am off by 10 inches. OK, so you know the absolute error. It's 10 inches for this length that I've measured. But the question is, is that a good value or is that a bad value? Did I do a good job of measuring or a bad job of measuring? If I was, say, measuring the distance between the Earth and the moon, and I was off by 10 inches, I'd say that's a pretty good measurement. That's really, really good. Now, on the other hand, if I was measuring my height and I was off by 10 inches, then that's a really, really bad measurement. I did a really bad job of measuring if I'm off by 10 inches on a person's height. So what we really need is we need a relative error, an amount where we compare the amount we're off by the total amount. And the way we figure out a relative error is by using the percent error formula. And that's the one you have on your screen right now. Percent error is basically equal to the first part of it here is this is absolute value. So we see our little absolute value signs on both sides here. So absolute value of the actual value, what it really is. So this is sort of what it really is, minus the measured, which is what you measured. Divided by the actual. Now, because of the fact we have an absolute value on the top, that means that that difference is always going to be positive. It's always the positive difference between what it really is and what you measured. And so you take that positive difference, you divide it by the actual value, and then you multiply it by 100, and that's what gets it into percent here, um, is do that. Uh, you need to be careful. Sometimes you'll see this is written with 100% on the end. Uh, the only problem with doing that is that that's fine. That's actually more accurate. Um, just be careful because a lot of times when people want to multiply times 100%, they say, well, 100% is 1, so let's multiply by 1. You do want to multiply by actually 100 here, which is why I didn't put in the percent sign there. But you basically take percent error, you take what it really is, you take the difference between that and what you measured, find the positive difference between those, divide it by the actual value, and then that's what you've got right there. So um, that's how you figure that out. Let's try working out a quick example on this, a couple examples. 
and go from there. So uh, let's find the percent error for the following. A rug with an area of 110.4 square feet is measured to be 8 feet by 14. So what we want to end up doing here is, um, first thing, what is our actual? Well, actual, it says it has an area of 110.4 square feet. That's what it actually is. And it's measured to be 8 feet by 14. Well, if it's measured to be those, we could use that to find what our measured area is. And so our measured area would be simply 8 times 14. And these are both feet. So that's feet. A little feet sign up there. And so we multiply 8 times, eight times 14. And so if you put that in your calculator, or if you know it off the top of your head, we say 8 times 14 is equal to 112. So we get 112 square feet. All right. Well, to find percent error, what is it? The percent error is going to be actual value, it's absolute value, of the actual, which we said was 110.4 minus, put that in parentheses, you can tell what it is, minus the measured value, which is 112, 112, like that, divided by the actual, 110.4, and then we'll take that times 100. So times 100, put that over there. Um, so doing this, what's the difference between, what is 110 minus, 110.4 minus 112? So we say 110.4 minus 112. And if you do that in your calculator, you get negative 1.6. But because of the fact that this is absolute value, this becomes positive 1.6. So you get just 1.6 divided by 110.4 and then times 100. And so doing this right here, you say that what we have here is we have 1.6 divided by 110.4, 1110.4, and then you take that number and multiply times 100. And if you do that math, you get that we have a final percent error here of 1.449%. Now notice that we didn't worry about significant figures there. Taking a look at our original numbers here is that Usually what you want to do is that whenever you're figuring significant figures is that don't ever do any rounding until you get to the final result. Um, and so, you know, we could have gone ahead and we said, we could have rounded this number right here, this 112, but we don't want to do that because we're not to the end yet. What you want to do is you then want to go back and take a look and say, well, this should only have, the 112 should only have one significant figure because of the 8. And so that means that these two, this 112, would actually be rounded to the hundreds place. And so that means that our top answer only have one significant figure. So that means that we have one divided by something that has four significant figures. That's going to end up giving us a total of one significant figure. So our final answer would actually just be 1% because it only has one significant figure there. So, um, so that's something to keep in mind. Let's try our next one. Pi is measured to be 3.3. And so, well, this one should be a little easier to work out here. So our percent error is equal to the absolute value of the actual which is 3.14, and you can look this up if you want to, 1592654 if you want to keep going, but we really don't need to go that far. Uh, that's our actual minus our measured, 3.3, divided by the actual, 3.14159 times 100%. And so uh, doing this guy right here, and let's put a little dividing line so we can see which ones are which, like that. So multiplying that out, we say first 3.14159 minus 3.3. And so we say minus 3.3. And so doing that, we get um, a total of 0 0.15841, if you're doing it in your calculator, 0 0.15841, divided by the number on bottom, which is pi again, 3.14159. And then multiply that times 100. And so when you do that, that you should end up getting a total of 5.04, which because of the fact our original number here had uh, two significant figures, our final one's going to end up with two significant figures, and so we have 5.0% error is what we get on that. So that right there is how you go about finding percent error. Relatively straightforward if you know what you're doing, but that's basically how we set this up. So that concludes what we have for today's lesson.